Hey, what's good, ladies and gentlemen? Let's talk about how to solve modified at one machine problems. So if you have a problem like this in a physics or an AP physics class, and a modified at one machine problem, like in this case, you've got a pulley with a flat surface here and a hanging mass over here attached to a mass on the surface of the table, for instance. If you have a problem dealing with this kind of scenario, then I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with this. There's going to be a part two as well, and when we deal with the part two, I'm going to show you how to deal with a ramp. If you have something on a ramp with a hanging mass, I'm going to show you how to deal with those problems as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. So the first problem we have says, ignoring friction for now, solve for the acceleration of the system in terms of m, big M, little m, and g. And I am distinguishing between big M and little m. You can see that's the hanging mass is the big M, and the shoe is little m over here. By the way, I am within this screencast. I'm going to show you the problem without friction first, then I'm going to show you how to deal with the problem with friction as well. And so I'm going to show you both case scenarios. So hang in there. If your problem does have friction, I will address that. So let's do the easier one first. First of all, we're going to be dealing with drawing a free body diagram here. And this is the free body diagram of little m over here. And that's just how we start the problem. Then how I typically start the problem and how I ask students to solve any problem with forces that we're dealing with is what I call the sum of the forces strategy. So what you do is in the x-axis, you're going to have the sum of the forces, literally add up the forces in the axis that you're dealing with. In this case, it's the x-axis to begin with, and there's only one force to deal with, so we just list that one out. Then we say, well, Newton's second law means that there is an equivalency between the sum of the forces and mass times acceleration in that axis. So that's what we write is Newton's second law. Then we can set these things equal to each other and see what happens. So we've got tension is equal to m times ax. And now I'm going to go ahead and just change this, change this over to just a. And I'm changing this to a generalized a because the acceleration here for little m is going to be the same as this acceleration here for big M. And so rather than making them two different variables, like acceleration the x and acceleration the y, I'm just going to call it acceleration, and that will actually be more helpful. So after doing the sum of the forces in the x-axis, normally at this point I'm going to do the sum of the forces in the y-axis. I'll do that for little m over here. It turns out that this is not as helpful because we don't have friction, and normally the normal force is crucial for solving for friction problems. In this case we're ignoring friction. I will show you the second problem, we will include friction. So in this screencast, I will refer back to this work right here, but basically I'm showing the sum of the forces in the y. I've got my acceleration in the y is zero, meaning this object is not even moving in the y-axis, let alone accelerating the y-axis, so clearly the acceleration in the y is zero. We can set these things equal to each other and see that the normal force is equal in magnitude to mg. Again, not as useful this case, but it is useful in the sense of getting into a habit of solving a problem in a very systematic way for forces every single time. Start with your free body diagram, some of your forces in the x, some of your forces in the y, and usually you're going to combine that work together with the friction equation, but we don't need that here. And then the other thing we have to deal with is this big M. So we haven't drawn the free body diagram for that or done anything with big M, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say this is our work that we did previously, our big M, we're going to draw our free body diagram. Now check this out. I'm going to make this positive and this negative, so down is going to become positive. So that may seem strange to you if you haven't done a whole lot of this, but I want to point out to you that you are in charge of the axis, not the other way around. So if you want to make down positive, make down positive. And in this case, it does make the math easier because this m is going to accelerate downwards at the same rate that this little m is going to accelerate to the right. They have the same acceleration. And so if we make down positive over here, then we make the sign of the accelerations the same, and we avoid some problems down the line mathematically. It's doable, but it's just easier if you make down positive. So that's what I'm doing here. Then we use the sum of the forces strategy in the y-axis. So we're going to say sum of the forces in the y is equal to big M times g minus t, because that t is now heading upwards. And the second line is Newton's second law again, so sum of the forces in the y is equal to mass times acceleration in the y. I will change this in a minute to just be generalized acceleration. First though, I'm going to set these two equal to each other, and so I've got mg minus t is equal to big M times acceleration. So this is what we have right here. Notice this is now just acceleration. I've now solved for tension over here. Also solved for tension over here, what do you think I'm going to do with those two tensions? 
Well, I'm going to set them equal to each other, of course. So I want to stress there are two big things about these types of problems right here that you need to understand. One is that their accelerations are going to be the same. The second is that their tensions are going to be the same. And whenever you have a tension problem, the tension on the first object from the second is equal to the tension on the second object from the first. So we could say, all right, fair enough. Let's go ahead and just set the tensions equal to each other and see what happens. And the problem is asking us to solve for the acceleration of the system. So we can continue. So we want to solve for acceleration. To do that, I'm going to drag the acceleration to be both on the same side and then factor out the acceleration and then solve and isolate for the acceleration here. So in terms of our variables, that would be the acceleration. Now taking this one step further, if we wanted to solve for the tension, if there was a follow-up question that said, hey, solve for the tension as well, at this point you could just take acceleration and apply it back into this equation here for the acceleration with tension, or you could apply it over here if you wanted to. It's actually easier to do it over here because this is a simpler equation, so we go ahead and do that to solve for our tension. All right, now like I promised, let's talk about what would happen if we wanted to include friction. So this would be a harder version of this problem, but not that much harder. We just have to modify our free body diagram here to include the force due to friction. The work that we did in the y-axis is already done for us, and this normal force will come into play when we deal with the friction equation, so that's where that's going to be useful. Let's go back over here and think about are some of our forces in our x-axis. So in this case, we do have two forces in the x-axis, not just one, but now two, and I need to add a negative or subtract that force due to friction over here. I'm calling this force due to friction rather than FK because that's what the College Board does for AP Physics, but because it's a sliding shoe across a table, that's going to be actually kinetic friction. We'll call it F sub F for now, just for friction. So then we'll say, the second line of the sum of the forces strategy is just Newton's second law here. Then we can set these equal to each other and say tension minus force due to friction is equal to mass times acceleration. So then we say, well, what do we know? We do know for friction, we've got our equation for friction that we can throw in. So we'll go ahead and do that. One more thing we do know, we did solve for the normal force. Remember previously we did that with little m up here. We solve for the normal force. So we can plug that in as well and we can start to see what happens. So what we've got is tension minus mu mg is equal to ma. And so if I want to solve for, say, the tension, if I want to do that, I can just isolate for tension. If I want to solve for acceleration of the system, I can do that with our similar forces in the y dealing with the larger m. So big M over here, if I do the sum of the forces strategy over here, now I've got a second tension. See where I'm going with this? I solved for tension before. Now I'm going to solve for tension again and set those two tensions equal to each other. So that's what I'm doing here to simplify the problem even more. And we end up with an acceleration here to address the question. And again, once more, if we wanted to take this and plug this back into a tension equation so we can deal with very basic variables, like they're requiring us to use very basic constants and variables here, then we can do that just by plugging it into one of these two equations over here and you end up with this for your attention. So that is more complex. The second problem is more complex than the first, but it is still absolutely doable. I do want to say that there is a part two to the screencast and dealing with problems like this that we're going to deal with a modified Atwood's machine with a ramp scenario. So I'll talk you through how to do that in part two of this screencast, but I do want to say that I've talked through all of the major concepts for a year of physics and for most of AP Physics C mechanics. And if you have any comments or questions down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Part two is coming up. Stick around for part two.